Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and we love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. In today's Q&A video, we're gonna be talking about your questions on shoe care. Thank you for all your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. After reading them all and answering as many as possible, I've selected five that we're gonna feature in today's Q&A video. Each of these individuals I have selected will receive a complimentary pair of our Wellington shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation in our channel. And remember, if you have any questions or comments while you're watching one of our videos, please ask them in the comments section below. I try to get back to as many of these questions as possible. And if you enjoyed this video or are interested in any of the products we discussed, please visit our website, hangerproject.com, where we've curated the finest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care accessories in the world, as well as other products for the well-dressed. Our first question today is from Peter Thielen, and it reads, Hi Kirby, I was living in Sweden earlier, and you know we have a lot of snow and slush. I fill a syringe with mink oil and put it in the microwave to make it soft. Then I push in the soft mink oil between uh, the top of the upper and the outsole, uh, which is where the welt is, to avoid water to go in and destroy the leather. Is this method good? Uh, any better ideas? Uh, kindest regards. So Peter, I uh, thank you for your question. And so this really gets to uh, the question regarding you know, how to protect a pair of shoes uh, for winter wear. And uh, there's no question that excessive uh, exposure to water uh, or salt uh, can really damage a fine pair of dress shoes. So this is the Allen Edmonds Park Avenue in Walnut. And so what Peter is getting to is that it's important to protect this area uh, on top of the welt where the outsole stitching goes through the welt and the outsole. And so uh, using mink oil certainly is, is one way that you could help waterproof this. Uh, but another method that I, I think is probably even better is using a wax polish. Now, if you have a choice between the Pat Deluxe and the Mirror Gloss, uh, the mirror glass is actually a, an even better product to use for waterproofing this weld. And the reason is because this has a higher concentration of those hard waxes. So what I would do is I would take a small little welt dauber, which is the smallest little brush, get a nice generous amount of uh, wax polish, and then I would just use that and rub kind of along this welt. And what that's gonna do is not only is it gonna clean this area and shine it a little bit, but those hard waxes are gonna coat the thread and really get in here to help protect and kind of waterproof this area of the shoe. So that is absolutely one way to kind of help protect your shoes during the winter time. Now, if you know that you're gonna be spending prolonged periods of time uh, walking uh, on snow or uh, in the rain, uh, what I really recommend is having a different set of shoes for that, and preferably one with a rubber outsole. So this is a Carmina uh, shoe, this is in suede, and you can see it is made with their rubber day-night outsole. And so this is a perfect example of a shoe that would be exceptional for winter wear. Again, it's suede, it can be waterproofed really easily. You're not gonna have to worry about polishing this because again, suede is very easily cared for. Uh, but more importantly is this rubber outsole is gonna protect uh, the shoe. You're not gonna have to worry about damaging your leather outsole, really making this a perfect shoe for the winter time or anyone that lives in a city where they're gonna be walking outside in the rain often. Now, as far as waterproofing is concerned, the Saphir Super Nulver, uh, or our waterproofing spray, uh, is an exceptional uh, product to help waterproof and provide additional protection to your shoes. What is unique about our waterproofing spray is that it doesn't contain any silicones, and so that's important, especially for a really high quality uh, uh, shoe, like this suede shoe from Carmina, that uh, you can actually even use this on smooth leather is that it wears off, and that's actually a feature. You don't want to use anything that is too permanent, like the uh, Tarago Nano Protector, which is a phenomenal waterproofer, but it's not something that I would ever use on a really high quality pair of shoes, uh, because it is so strong and so effective, you uh, essentially have to use ammonia to pull that off, uh, even to allow water to get back into the suede itself. So at some point, you're gonna wanna clean your suede shoes, and if it's totally waterproofed, you can't actually um, you know, lather the, uh, the suede cleaner uh, into the suede if that waterproofing agent is still on there. So uh, something like the uh, Saphir Super Nova is really exceptional in that, again, it's gonna dry slowly. You don't have to worry about any white rings forming and it will eventually wear off, which again is a feature uh, because you don't want anything too permanent on top of a beautiful pair of suede shoes. So if I was someone that was spending excessive amounts of time, you know, kind of walking in snow or walking in rain, 
I'd have a suede pair of shoes or boots with a rubber outsole, and I'd waterproof it with the Saphir Supernova. Our second question today is from Antares Uranus, and it reads, Kirby, uh, I have patent uh, leather shoes that I love, but I don't like the patent. Is there any way to strip the patent gloss from shoes and bring it back uh, to its original uh, leather? Thanks. So, a uh, great question. Uh, you know, the short answer is no. Unfortunately, you can't, and that's because uh, the way patent, uh, the patent leather process is applied is, is essentially a, a plastic coating on top of leather, uh, and there's just no way to pull that off without totally ruining the shoes. But that said, we do have a great product that is for cleaning patent leather. This is the Vernus Reef uh, in French, uh, or uh, in English, a patent leather reef, which should probably be cleaner. Uh, and this is used exclusively for cleaning patent leather. Uh, what's nice about this product is that it's available in a black and a neutral. And so the black has a little bit of pigment in it that's going to help, you know, uh, repair or soften uh, any type of scuffing that can inevitably occur on patent leather shoes. And so it's a great product for keeping your patent leather shoes shiny and clean. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, if it already has that patent leather uh, finish applied to it, there's no way to remove that. If you're someone that is considering purchasing a pair of uh, opera pumps or uh, formal black tie shoes, uh, take a look at our black tie guide that we have uh, on our YouTube channel. If you're ordering those shoes or having them made, I would suggest considering having them made in just a calfskin, not a patent leather, but just a calfskin. And then you can use our mirror gloss to uh, produce a really high gloss shine on the toe. Uh, and that would produce a beautiful formal dress pump uh, that has the effect of patent leather without being you know, plasticized, essentially. Uh, we also have a patent leather care video if you're interested in seeing us use the Vernus Reef. So if you have a patent leather pair of shoes or you know, even a handbag, a wife's handbag or a pair of your wife's pumps, uh, the Vernus Reef is a great product uh, that is really the only thing available that I know of to care for patent leather. Our next question is from Herbert Famcamp, and this is on our Shell Cordovan Shoe Shine Guide. And it reads, uh, Kirby, in this video, you used the mirror gloss polish on Cordovan, but in the FAQ of the product, it stated you're unable to use the mirror gloss on Shell Cordovan due to the turpentine in the polish. Uh, can you explain the discrepancy? Is the mirror gloss safe for Cordovan? A clarification would be greatly appreciated. Uh, thanks for the videos. A great question. So. Uh, we should probably update the FAQ section of that product listing because, uh, you know, in all honesty, the mirror gloss is safe to use on uh, Cordovan. Now, uh, we do not recommend using a, a traditional Pat Deluxe or wax polish that's designed for calf skin or even cream polish for that matter on Cordovan. Because of those turpentines, they will penetrate the Cordovan leather, which is a highly compressed fiber structure and cause that fiber structure to expand. And so over time, it can actually lead to the degradation or cracking of cordovan leather, which otherwise is an incredibly durable uh, skin. So uh, I would recommend using the patent, the mirror gloss, if you're looking to produce a higher gloss shine on the, shine on the toe. And the reason is because relative to the Pat Deluxe, the mirror gloss has a much lower concentration of those turpentine solvents in it. So you're gonna get uh, less of an effect uh, on the cap than you would with the Pat Deluxe. Now that said, uh, if for traditional and kind of normal daily care, I absolutely recommend using our Cordovan cream polish uh, on your Cordovan shoes. And the reason is because uh, the Cordovan uh, cream polish that we have is based on Neat's foot oil and doesn't have any turpentines on it. So that's what's going to naturally uh, you know, rejuvenate and condition uh, that Cordovan skin without causing uh, any uh, of those fiber structures to change. Now, another interesting fact, uh, this is our Cordovan Park Avenue uh, that Alan Edmonds sent us. As you can see, beautiful shoe, really showcasing that kind of natural, uh, glossy patina that is so unique to Cordovan. But you can see that it's beginning to uh, form a little bit of a white residue. And so what that is, is blooming. So basically, at the Cordovan uh, or Horween factory, the Cordovan is applied with waxes. And so these are those waxes kind of coming out of the skin uh, and then just um, solidifying. So very easy to fix and really showcases just how important it is to brush your Cordovan shoes. So you can see just by buffing this, uh, with a uh, pig bristle brush, actually, which is a little bit stiffer than horsehair, that totally disappears. So a little bit of uh, brushing uh, with a pig bristle brush, uh, all that blooming that you see has totally disappeared. 
And again, you know, cordovan is such a durable, it's such a hardy material. Uh, it's really a great, um, you know, almost a ballistic material. It's, it's much stronger than calfskin. And for that reason, cordovan uh, is such a cult favorite among uh, road warriors, if you will, just because it uh, generally requires less maintenance than the equivalent calfskin shoe. Honestly, just frequent brushing, you know, will pull those oils uh, out of the cordovan and allow it to rebuff. Uh, if you're looking for a higher gloss shine, of course, you can use the mirror gloss uh, on the toe or the rear quarters, uh, any of those hard areas of the shoe that aren't gonna flex. And then for regular maintenance, of course, uh, our cordovan cream polish is gonna be the best thing that you can use for these shoes. Great question, I hope this helps. Yeah, our next question is from Primary Application uh, on our Allen Edmonds Cordovan review video. And it reads, I do have a question. In my haste to get some conditioner and polish on my new shoes, I used Cadillac conditioner followed by Lincoln Wax. Needless to say, the finish is not coming along as I would like. I'm planning on ordering uh, products from the Hanger Project. How do I proceed now that the shoes have been contaminated? So, a uh, great question. Uh, I admire and applaud your desire to shine a new pair of shoes. Uh, that's actually another question that we'll get to here briefly. So to your question on how to remove the Cadillac conditioner and Lincoln wax, the best product is the Saphir Reno Mat. Now this is uh, a little bit more aggressive than say a leather cleaning soap uh, because uh, it is actually gonna remove anything that's been placed on top of that leather, any resins, any pigments, and any waxes. So your Cadillac condition, your Lincoln uh, wax polish, the Reno Mat will uh, very effectively remove that off of the leather, restoring it to its natural condition uh, so that you can then polish it using the Saphir products, which of course are gonna take better care of the leather uh, and produce a more brilliant shine. Now that said, you will see a little bit of pigment come off uh, of the shoe whenever you're using the Reno Mat. Part of that might be the pigment from old polish, but some of that could also be the pigment actually applied uh, to the leather itself. So my recommendation with the Reno Mat is always to test a small hidden area of the shoe first to make sure that the finish of that shoe is stable and then to not go overboard. I mean, you know, use it, uh, but don't continue using it until you stop seeing a little bit of pigment rub off on your chamois uh, because by that point, you've probably totally uh, stripped your shoe of any finish at all. So use the Saphir Reno Mat conservatively. Uh, another application for the Reno Mat that anyone that follows our Mirror Shine videos will be aware of, the Reno Mat is really the best product uh, and really the only product for that matter to pull off those accumulated hard waxes off of a Mirror Shine so that you can start over. So if you're someone that is really into the Mirror Shine process, inevitably at some point uh, your Mirror Shine is going to crack or it's going to chip or flake and you're going to need to pull all those waxes off to start over. Uh, the Reno Mat is the best and most effective product that you can use to do that. So our next question is from Marcus uh, Patience, and it reads, uh, Mr. Allison, should a new pair of fine leather shoes be polished right out of the box uh, before they are worn? So the short answer to that question is absolutely yes. Um, not only because uh, shining a pair of new shoes is gonna make them look better, uh, but because it also protects the leather. It's important to remember that 99% of all shoes receive no finishing at the factory. And the reason for this is because in order for a pair of shoes to be polished, it has to be done by hand. So a company like Edward Green or Gaziano Gerling or any bespoke shoe company is going to be polishing their shoes by hand. There's no way to automate that or do it in any type of industrial way. That's why most shoes don't receive any type of finishing from the factory. Now that said, all shoes benefit from a little bit of polish. And so a new pair of shoes, I would absolutely recommend polishing them. We have a video specifically on this topic. It's how to polish a new pair of shoes uh, that really showcases what a difference a little bit of polish can make on a brand new pair of shoes. Great question, Marcus. I look forward to sending you a new pair of shoelaces for those shoes. Uh, and uh, you know, post a picture on Instagram. Let us know what those shoes look like after you've had an opportunity to put some polish to them. Once again, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their comments and questions. It's your engagement on our YouTube channel that make these Q&A videos possible. Not only does it give me an opportunity to answer in greater depth a lot of the questions that I'm already answering in the comments section of our videos, but it allows me an opportunity to just acknowledge and thank everyone for your participation on our channel. If you haven't taken an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, just sharing your opinion or your thoughts about our content helps us make better videos for you in the future. I read all those questions and comments personally and really do enjoy getting back to as many of them as possible. I'm Kirby Allison and thanks for joining me.